Folks, we've been telling you for a long time about how Republicans across the country, including Mississippi, are using their power uh, to meddle in the affairs of local government. Well, there in Mississippi, what Republicans are doing is they're literally expanding a state police force. They're expanding a state police force to cover what is called the capital area. Now, here's the deal. That's where most whites in Jackson, Mississippi uh, live. And so uh, this has been quite contentious. The NAACP has filed a lawsuit against the state of Mississippi as a result uh, of this. Now, the NAACP says the law will create a separate and unequal policing in the majority black capital and violate the principles of self-government by taking control of the police and some courts out of the hands of residents. The new law allows people convicted in the Capitol Complex Improvement District Court to be put in a state prison rather than in a city or county jail. And the judge of the new court is not required to live in Jackson and is going to be appointed by the Mississippi Supreme Court Chief Justice. Now, again, white Republicans control the legislature. J Democrats and black folks control Jackson, Mississippi. Which 83% of the residents in Jackson they're black, the most significant percentage of any major city in the United States. The NAACP's lawsuit seeks to block the law that violates the Voting Rights Act and the 14th Amendment. Joining me now from Heidelberg, Mississippi, is State Senator Juan Barrett. Senator Barrett, glad to have you on Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, this is, first of all, what rationale have these white Republicans given for doing this? Well, Thanks, for Roland, for having me on. Uh, it's been, it, it is indeed a pleasure to be on your show. But, you know, Roland, when we talk about House Bill 1020, you know, think in their mind that they was thinking that, you know, it was the intent of it, I think, was pretty good. But but how it was done and, and, and the way that they did it uh, basically, you know, was against uh, what should have happened. And what I mean by that is that, you know, if, if it's something that you want to help me with, I think that you should talk to me about what it is that you want to help me with and how we can fix this together. But I don't think any of those things happen. And I think that's that's the gist of the problem is that nobody was really brought to the table um, to wanting to help the city. If, if you want to help me with police, then let's talk about this together. If you want to help me fix my crime in my city, then let's talk about this. But don't just come to me with your plan and say, here's how I'm going to help you without me having any input on it. OK, you but you said you said the intent was good. What's the intent? I mean, well, the, why are they actually well, doing this? Well, are they the suggesting was, that the existing think, police force, the existing court system doesn't work. I think the the, the the intent was that, you know, we have to realize that, you know, Jackson was is. You know, the police department there is declining because other departments and, and the Capitol Police are offering officers more money, so they're leaving. So there is a need um, to help with the, with the police. And there, I think the courts... Okay, so here's the deal. Think, okay, hold up. So if the Capitol Police are offering more money and that's the deal, well, why in the hell the state, why does the Mississippi just give Jackson more money for its police department? Okay, that's a question that I mean that's the answer that we hadn't got that's that's a question that we hadn't gotten an answer for either. And that's what I'm saying, you know, if if you want to help, then 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 I think that they should have they should have engaged uh Jackson and the people of Jackson, those people that represent Jackson. I think all parties should have been at the table if there's a plan to help. And I don't and that didn't happen. And that's why we ended up where we are now, and that's why everybody is mad about the things that happen. And you talk about judges and you talk about courts and all of these things, you know. It's not right for me or anybody to have the right to vote, but they're not able to have the right to vote. So you're going to appoint people uh, that's going to be, but just going to be my judge, but don't live where I live. So where's my representation? Why, you know, how does my voice count? And these are the problems that, that we're having with this House Bill 1020. Well, I mean, again, I mean, I'm just sort of just still stuck on what is just most basic and fundamental. Are they suggesting that police in Jackson, in the Jackson city of Jackson 
are not doing the job, so therefore they need more assistance. Is there, has there been a dramatic crime increase in the Capitol complex? Um, why have a separate court system? So again, there has to be some sort of logic or reason or rationale for making this decision. Have they provided you or anybody else any reason why they are doing it? The, the, the rationale that they're using is that they're saying that there is a, a spike in crime. Across the city of Jackson, sure, there is a, a spike of, uh, in crime across the whole city. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. But hold up. But, but Senator Barrett, here's the problem. Barnett, Barnett. Not this yet. is not expanding to the, but this is the problem. This is not expanding to the city of Jackson. So my question is, did they provide you or anybody else evidence that there is a spike in crime in the Capitol complex in this area and is covering, is there a spike in crime in that area? Because if it's not, they're trying to use a spike in the crime in other parts of Jackson to do this here. So I'm asking in this Capitol complex, did they provide any data that showed there was a spike in crime in that area? I haven't seen any specific data, but that was that was the conversation. That was some of the things that they talked about was a spike in crime. In so the, they offered anecdotal. Now I can say anecdotal data. I can say that there, I can I'm, say. This is why I'm confused. No, no, what I'm go saying ahead, though, go ahead. Is there has been a spike in crime across all of Jackson, not just, not just in certain no, no, areas. No, no, but, no, no, but here's my point. But Senator, here's my point. This, this bill does not cover all of Jackson. I it only extends police powers in the Capitol complex. So where nearly all of the white residents of Jackson live. So what I'm asking you is, did they provide any data that showed there was a spike in crime in the Capitol complex where this area will be covered? I didn't see any data on that, no. So what they did is they tried to use, oh, there's a spike in crime in all of Jackson as justification to expand a police presence in the Capitol complex, but didn't offer any reasoning to, to why this is done. That that's like me. That that's that, that's that's literally like me saying, um, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna put uh, some icy hot all over my body. But my back hurt. Well, why in the hell am I putting icy hot on my feet and my legs when hell I just need it in my back? This this ain't that. This is real clear. So it, here's what it appears to me. It appears to me like the white Republicans in Mississippi want to create a separate police department and a separate court system in the area where nearly all white folks in Jackson live. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, and that's what it looks like, you know, according to everybody else. That's, you know, that's exactly what it looks like. But again, I, I, you know, I'm just going back to, to the, you know, some of the discussions and the debates and things that we had um, in the Senate uh, legislature. And that goes back again to what I said, you know, if you truly, again, if you truly was concerned about the crime in the state, in the city of Jackson, in the capital city, if you're concerned about all of these things, then let's talk about all of these things, and let's like let's talk about a specific area or or anything like. But let's talk. Let's fix all of it because you know as well as I do. You know, if if you're not willing to fix all of it, then then how are we really going to fix anything if we don't take care of all of it? And and that's the problem that we have. And, and you know, with the judges and all of that, you know, it's only to a specific uh, area, like you said, in the city of Jackson. But if we're going to fix crime in Jackson, let's fix all of it. You know, to me, Mark, you, Roland, you, you, you oh, talked about putting ice um, hot on your... You talked about putting ice and hot on your... And look, while your, you have this going on, but while this is going on, you also have these Republicans 
who wants to take control of the water system after the mayor went to D.C. and got the $600 million. And they offered no help to get the money, but when he went and got the money from the Biden administration, now all of a sudden, they interest, they're not interested in the water system. Exactly. We have a lot of problems, Martin Rose. And, uh, and, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, these same white Republicans have been trying to take control of the airport, too, as, right? There was a there, there was a, and a, there was a, some legislation passed before, or, or was attempted to be passed before, where the uh, Jackson Airport yes would be controlled by someone else other than the city of Jackson. So what this really sounds like is white Republicans in Mississippi don't like the fact that black folks are running a major city. So what they're now doing is playing uh, bully and using the powers of the legislature to strip the city of a lot of its uh, assets. And correct me if I'm wrong, this court system, the residents of Jackson are paying for that and not the state, correct? That's correct. So they're creating a new pol expanded police force and an on court system and the residents of Jackson, 83% white, got to pay for it. But the white Republicans not putting any extra money into it to pay for it, but they want to control it. Yes. Uh, you know, when we, when we do you support this NAACP lawsuit? Do I support the lawsuit? Yes, because I think it, it's, you know, it's, it's unconstitutional. Um, but again, you know, we'll have to see what happens in the courts again, uh, how this plays out in, in, in the courts, you know, but, but going in, you know, a, a lot of us knew that a lawsuit was going to be pending um, on the passage of this bill. Uh, but again, again, Roland, I, I have to say that in my opinion, in my opinion only is that, you know, the, in, the initial, the initial thing was, okay, let's help the city of Jackson with their crime. Let's help the city of Jackson with their police and let's help the city of Jackson that we can make these things better. I think as it went along, then I think some of the things that should have happened didn't happen. And I think that's why we end up with the results. Or that's why we end up with the product that we have now. I don't think there was enough discussion with the leadership. I don't think there was enough discussion with the residents. I don't think any of these things was enough before we came back with the plan if we truly were going to help the city of Jackson with the crime in Jackson, not just related to a specific area in Jackson. Senator Barrett, uh, I don't believe for a second this was ever about helping Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, this th th That was a ruse. This was about protecting white residents in Jackson, and they don't give a damn about the rest of Jackson, but they do love those sales receipts, uh, sales tax receipts that come from Jackson that pays for all kind of stuff for the rest of those white legislators in their broke-ass districts, so they don't mind black folks uh, paying for that stuff. So really what they want Jackson, Mississippi is to be sharecroppers for the rest of the city, and they control the most important parts. And so we'll see how this uh, lawsuit plays out. Uh, Senator Barrett, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Let me pull up my panel right now. Uh, joining me now, Robert Patillo, host of uh, Pe People, Passion, Politics, News and Talk, uh, 1380 WAOK in Atlanta. He's coming to us out of D.C. Rebecca Carruthers, Vice President, Fair Elections Center, to, to, uh, to Run Walker, founder of Context Media. Uh, Rob, I'll start with you. I mean, l l look. Today in Montana, you got the Republicans that silenced a transgender elected official because they didn't like the fact that she disagreed with them. You got Republicans in Tennessee that expelled two black members uh, and they still hate the fact that they're still talking. Uh, you got you got in Tennessee getting rid of uh, a uh, independent citizen run police accountability board. You got in other states where Republicans in Florida, Alabama, they pass bills that say local people cannot get rid of Confederate, Confederate monuments. What you have here are Republicans who do not care about 
who do not care that other people vote. Their whole deal is we got power. We can do what the hell we want to do. And we really don't care whether y'all like it or not. That's what's happening in Jackson, Mississippi. So the NAACP should be filing lawsuits against Republican legislatures all across the country. And you can add to that in Wisconsin, where the Republican legislature may have threatened once to get the supermajority, uh, they will try to impeach the newly elected Democratic Supreme or uh, progressive Supreme Court justice there. North Carolina, where you had a Democratic state senator uh, who switched from Democrat to Republican uh, there. And so now they will be able to override any veto from the governor. What we are seeing is the results of the DNC neglecting state level parties for the last 15 years. Ever since Howard Dean uh, was DNC chairman, we have seen a consolidation of power were in D.C. taking money away from state and local uh, Democratic parties, away from local organizing commissions, etc. And because of that, during the period of, period of time that President Obama was in office, we saw 1,044 seats in nationwide flip from Democrat to Republican. So even though Republicans have not won a popular vote since 2004, and that's the only popular vote they've won since 1988, even though the uh, Democratic 50, 50 Democratic senators represent uh, 41 million more uh, voters than the 49 Republican senators, Senators, even though you uh, have a House of Representatives that represents millions or more on the Democratic side of the aisle than the Republican side of the aisle, they've been able to consolidate power in these state and local governments. And that's where we're seeing much of the very extreme legislation coming from. And remember, when you have a, a uh, controversy between the states, that is ultimately decided by the Supreme Court. What else have uh, Republicans been doing? President Trump uh, nominated more and uh, confirmed more uh, federal justices or federal judges under the uh, under uh, Mitch McConnell uh, than any other president. We see a 6 to 3 majority on the Supreme Court. So their plan is to put this extreme legislation in place on the state level, have it ratified by the Supreme Court and then spread it nationwide. And then you never have to worry about getting a majority in Congress or getting a veto-proof majority or filibuster-proof majority in the Senate. You can do national legislation from the state level, and that's what we're seeing now. Rebecca, he, again, for all the simple Simons out there who run their mouths and, oh, Rollerball, you trying to get black folks to vote Democrat. Let me remind these idiots, when you file a lawsuit and you file it in federal court, those are federal judges. Those federal judges are appointed either by Republicans or Democrats. They're confirmed by the Senate, whether led by the Republicans or Democrats. This battle right here is likely going to be playing out in federal court because why? The NAACP is using the Voting Rights Act as a legal basis for the lawsuit. So for all of the idiots who say voting doesn't matter, hmm, I bet you don't want one of those Trump judges hearing this lawsuit. Well, this particular lawsuit is going to go through the Fifth Circuit. Um, but while you had your previous guest on, um, the senator from Mississippi, I believe Senator Barnett, I wanted to hear him actually call out and use the actual word of what's going on here. We're seeing an apartheid system that's happening in front of us in Jackson, Mississippi. And like you said, this is something, um, if it's not checked, um, it's going to um, spread across the South and even spread into other parts of the country, even beyond the South. Um, to have a, uh, a institutionalized, systematic regime of segregating resources based upon race, whether it's the courts, whether it is dealing with their airport authority, or it's dealing with um, um, law enforcement or a uh, new police uh, force. You know, I'm afraid that this is also going to extend to the schools. This, was, this is going to extend um, to the sewer and water and other, uh, and other public things that are happening in Jackson. But to me, that's very alarming. And I want people to actually use the words of actually what we're seeing happening in front of us. This is apartheid that's happening in Jackson, Mississippi. Toron, I keep warning black folks. Don't think for a second you're not going to see similar actions taken in other cities all across the South where black folks are in control. This is them running the game plan. Um, to my sister's point who just spoke, um, she's absolutely right that what we're seeing is sort of like a, uh, a vestiges of apartheid, but it goes back even further than that. 
What I see happening goes back to 1877 after Reconstruction when the federal troops were pulled out of the South, because before that, there were stopgaps in place to allow black judges, black legislatures, um, not black senators, but people on that level to regain power after the end of the Civil War. Immediately when federal troops were pulled out of the South, you saw the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan and you saw voter intimidation. You saw basically destruction of black schools, um, lynchings of black people, um, intimidation. So this is what's happening. And what I think has to what people really have to understand is you mentioned voting earlier. What people have to understand is that people got to get out of this idea of thinking that federal and presidential elections are the only ones that matter. It's the elections that are unsexy that people have to pay attention to, whether it's the school board elections, whether it's federal, whether it's state judge elections, whether it's your city council person election, because this is what's happening. Um, what the situation in Jackson, the, the, the population of Jackson is 85 percent black, 15 percent white. Basically, what they're doing is trying to create a private police force specifically for one specific area. And that's a trial balloon, I think, to expand sort of like segregated policing where you have black people policed in one way, white people policed in another. And you're right. This is happening all over the South. We had a situation in Atlanta where the, the uh, a part of Atlanta called Buckhead, which is rich, white, mm. pretty affluent, tried to succeed from the rest of the city of Atlanta to create their own police force and their own city council. So what you're seeing is what to, to what the brother said earlier is that you're seeing right wing legislatures throw up these trial balloons to see what will stick and to coalesce um, people around these ideas, whether they win or they don't. But what you do is you have a base of voters who you can scare into saying, if you don't vote for this, the black boogeyman is going to come take your kids and the black boogeyman is going to invade your house. And these things are very effective when it comes to voting. So you can ignore it at your peril. Well, I say this to the black folks who are watching. The white boogeyman is here. And the white boogeyman is the Republican Party. And, and, and we can walk down this thing. And I'm telling y'all, that's why I wrote my book, White Fear. They are, this ain't no dress rehearsal. They are actively engaged in trying to absolutely limit the power of black people. And what they're doing in Jackson, they want to take your money and fund their stuff. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. We feel the hidden impacts of climate change that land harder in black, brown, and native communities. Not many people talk about it because they clearly don't know our lives. But with President Biden's landmark infrastructure and climate plans, our issues are finally seen. Removing lead pipes means we know our water is safe. Cutting carbon pollution helps our kids breathe easier. 1.5 million new jobs mean stable work in communities. The impact we need right now. 